What's up, it's Armani White, aka Big Blanc. I'm headed to the BET office to do my interview, eat a bunch of snacks, have fun, steal stuff, you know, like I do it everywhere. Uh, I'm painting scene for you. Uh, I'm getting evicted from my crib. Um, and it's because like there's a leak in my ceiling. I'm getting evicted from my crib, there's a leak in my ceiling, and I'm sleeping in the living room on like half of a couch because <laughs> my roommate's sleeping on the other half. So, uh, and I did this video, we was watching Fresh Prince the night before, I did the video, like man, whatever, just upload this, go to sleep. I wake up around four or five in the morning to get ready for the gym, and it has two million views. I said, wait a second, like, I, I, I said, wipe my eyes a little bit, and I said, nah, that's an M. That's definitely an M. <laughs> and I click, I read through the comments. Everybody's like, yo, what is this? When is this song dropping? And it's like verified pages. The celebrities is in it. The big, you know, whatever. The big publications is in it. Everybody's like, what is this? What is this? I'm like, oh, I think we got one. Like, I think we did it. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, and that was, that was like the morning after, you know? Like, and every day from there, it's just been like another episode of like, oh, this is getting bigger. Or like, oh, this is really happening. Or, oh, like, we're really here, you know? For me, I have a few different writing processes. Like, it depends on where I start at. Like, if I'm in my room, if it started like on a voice memo, that I just had an idea while I was on the road. If I'm in the bathroom, I make a lot of songs in the bathroom, like just in different areas of the bathroom. Um, but, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, even Billie Eilish, like I made Billie Eilish, I'm sitting on the toilet, I made Billie Eilish, and I was like, I bet, that's cool. <laughs> but like, I got like in the showers or, and you know, once I, uh, once I come up with whatever that idea is, that melody is, um, I just start writing to the melody. When I'm recording, a lot of times, I like first of all, I don't wear shoes when I record. Um, and uh, I don't know, I like to be comfortable. I like to be all the way comfortable. And first thing I do when I get in the booth is I scream. As loud as I possibly can, I'm like, ah! Because I'm, like, I'm trying to get my voice comfortable with like, who am I gonna be on this record? Am I gonna be cool, Blanco? Am I gonna be like really bright, excited, Blanco? Am I, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but it's it's really, for me, the, the biggest piece of the creative process is just comfortability. It's like, how comfortable can I get? I'm bow-legged. Pigeon toe too. Allergic to chicken. Uh, yeah, bad, right? My favorite food was salmon, but I found out I make your hips big, so I just went back to applesauce. My favorite food is applesauce now. I've always wanted to rap. Thing is, like, I've, you know, I've been rapping since second grade, but if I could remember them, I don't think I would say them out loud. They had to be bad. My favorite cartoon characters battle each other, and I was like rapping in front of perspectives of them. It wasn't good. Early influences from Philly was obviously like Just Scott, so it was The Roots, Black Thought, um, uh, Will Smith obviously from West Philly, um, but there was like a DVD era in Philly. So like we, the, the thing that we bought back to the lunch table was like Reed Dollars if he was from West Philly, Joe Jahad if he was from North, Meek Mill if he was from South Philly, but like we'd all just come back, come to the lunch table and we'd just be battling with the lyrics and stuff like that. So like uh, the DVD era was like really, it made me feel like I could do it. I had a rap group called Bootleg Productions. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to write everybody else's raps because I was like, I just, nobody else wanted to rap. I was like, no, listen, I can do it for you too and you too and you, I'll do a whole different flow for you. Like, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> I, I definitely, I remember Bootleg Productions, that's crazy. So my first song that made me listen to, made me wanna rap, it was a song called Kill You by Eminem. And like, I didn't, you know, I didn't listen to it. Like, I want to kill my parents. But like, it was like, I listened to it. And I was like, oh, he can talk about his real life. And, you know, people will accept it. And I was like, well, why don't I just talk about my real life? I'm in second grade. I'm going through a lot. Like, I, okay, you know, so, but it, it just, it helped me with just like being myself in my music, you know. My favorite artists, just, you know, not just Philly, but just around the world, like the, it's around the world about creating worlds. Like it's, it's when I listen to a Missy Elliott, Luda, Busta Rhymes, uh, it just feels like I'm surrounded by their music. Like it goes from being on a piece of paper to being like, you know, your entire environment. So when I'm creating my music, I feel like a lot of other artists that still do it is like a Tyler the Creator, Travis Scott, Uzi. Um, like, you know, they create this environment with the music and they create like, you know, it's, it's, it feels like, it feels like ambiance. Things with Lost in the Fire, it was less of like a project for me. It was more so just a, uh, a journal entry. Like I lost my aunt and three cousins in a house fire in 2006. And it was just something that for those 15 years, I just been scared to talk about. It was like, it was really hard to materialize these thoughts, these ideas and convey them into music or like into a three minute song or whatever that, you know, that message was. So um, we had in 2020, we had another house fire that 
I don't know, for me, it just felt like my brain talking to my other brain and then being like, yo, this is the moment for you to say what you actually have to say. Like for you to, you know, be open about it, for you to be like, be vulnerable, talk about the best friend that you lost in the house fire, talk about the second mother that you lost in the house fire, talk about the 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 other kids that was in the house fire that felt like your lifeline growing up. So uh, for me, it was, you know, like like I'm, I'm so used to just being this happy, bubbly person. It's like, there's, you know, and that's why I call my music happy hood music. It's like I'm the happy, I'm the brighter side, I'm the sun that stands in front of the clouds, but the clouds are still in my sky. There's a lot of things that I went through that sometimes it is troubling, it is difficult or hard to talk about. And there's those moments where it's just like, yo, you have to get through this, you have to speak about this, you have to be open and be, you know, just be vulnerable about these moments. So that's what Things We Lost in the Fire for me was. It was, it was a journal entry, it was me being able to actually talk about and put my feelings on paper projects before things we lost in the fire. I made a, uh, a EP called Keep in Touch and it was about my father. I want to immortalize these people with these projects. Like, you know, so it's like you guys might not know what this is, but for me, this is, you know, this is my urn for my father. This is my urn for my aunt and my cousins. This is, you know, so uh, it was really just about immortalizing these people that I'm never going to let go of. I'm never going to forget about. Once I look back, I was just like, yo, like we really did it. I was out there in a, in a latex glove of an outfit, uh, like, but like we really did it. We made it work. It was fire. I did my little spin move. I did, you know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, uh, it was just fun. Like, and Nori, Nori added like just that that special, you know, they put that sasson on there. He like, added a little seasoning to it, so it, like it just made it, it just amplified it. <laughs>